back on on tonight. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I had to switch over headphones. I had an issue with my headphones, but we still gonna flow. The enemy gets go no glory on tonight. And Mary, whoever you are, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I thank you for letting me know because I, I would have still been flowing. You know, I was already 10 minutes in, you know, just, just flowing, talking, you know what I mean, teaching and, and just going. I was starting to get into depths in the teaching on tonight, but I thank you. It didn't go into 15 minutes, but it's, it's all about God getting the glory, and I appreciate God for you. But anyway, I'm coming back on tonight for another Midnight Cry. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Hell on a replay. Those who are watching uh, uh, by way of replay, I thank y'all so much for tuning in on tonight. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are, I apologize for the issue with the headphones, but we're going to flow. I thank God for allowing me to have access to other headphones as well. So I just thank God on tonight. We're going to flow and let God have his way. And I had this word titled about it was very good. Amen. And the revelation and the wisdom of God's word is really going to help you. If you pay attention, I heard God say in the spirit. And if somebody you both shot up if you just pay attention to the word on tonight and have your ears open to hear uh, the, uh, the spirit of the Lord said he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying on tonight. So if you just listen to this word, a yoke shall be destroyed through the anointed. Amen. And I, I, I got this title and I did this because when, when we're faced with opposition, when we're faced with trials and tribulation, now hear me on this. There, there are people who, who immediately lay back up on the things of God due to the opposition, due to the pressure. Uh, have you been there before where it, you was in ministry, but it's like it, it was such a strain on ministry. It was a strain on how to hear God because it was so much, it was so much um, perplexity. It's like your back was up against the wall. It was like there was things on the left or to the right. There was opposition all around. It's like you couldn't get a break. I mean, you, you seeking God in that you know you you giving God your all you stand consistent you you paying your tithes and like the bottom still falling out you understand so I'm saying in a place where you know for sure you know we're gonna go through a trial we we know this the word of God tells us and we've gone through things I mean since we've got saved but what what uh, what what Christians do is they get in this walk and they expect it to be easy I'm talking about the minute you profess that Jesus is Lord that's when the warfare is coming. So we're like, wait a minute. I think, you know, people made it seem like, okay, once you get saved, here comes the blessing. You know what I mean? Here, here, you know, here comes this new life. You know, here comes this game changer. You know what I mean? As I heard somebody just say recently, but don't get me wrong. God moves and you know what I mean? God, God blesses the believers in such a way. And God does things supernaturally and miraculously. Don't get me wrong. But one thing about the children of God, some children, some people, they don't like to suffer. Uh, they don't like to suffer in this walk. You know what I mean? As soon as they see opposition, little bitty stuff, they just buckling, giving up, throwing in a towel. Just giving up on, on God, just breaking in the struggle. And, you know what I mean? Giving up. But there, there are so many that do. You understand? There are so many that as soon as they back get up against the wall, they throw in a towel and just... Forget about their calling. Forget about their ministry. and Just walk away from marriage. When God told you in the word, do not find it strange when what? When fiery trials come up on you. So we already know trials are coming. So there's, there's, there's no sense in you trying to get mad. There's no sense in murmuring and complaining. One thing about it, you have to pass your test. And, and this is why I'm saying this. Follow me on tonight. We're going to flow on this. What it is, you got, when we go from grade school, First natural, then spiritual. Watch this. So you had kindergarten, you had first grade, you had second grade, you had third grade, right? But see, notice if you didn't pass a certain test, you couldn't move to the other uh, next grade. You couldn't move the fifth grade without passing fourth grade. You couldn't move uh, move from second grade, you know, without you know passing first grade. You couldn't you couldn't move forward. So what it is, what God has to do is God has to send you through series of tests, series of trials. So God has to test you to see if you're going to pass. You see what I mean? So one thing about it, you know that you're anointing, you know, the true blessings of God comes through your trials, comes for you persevering, not giving up, not throwing in the towel, not, you know, not breaking in the struggle, 
not murmuring and complaining through a thing. But God wants to see, are you still going to magnify Moshe Talabaha? Are you still going to magnify me under pressure? Are you still going to give me glory despite of your back being up against the wall? Despite of the man walking out of your life, despite of the ex, the ex, uh, ex uh, wife walking out of your life, are you still going to give me glory? So I had this title tonight about it was very good. So somebody said, well, what, what, why, how did you get the title? I'm going to show you. I'm going to come out of the scripture on Romans 8. Let's see, I'm going to come at, come up to 27, Romans 8 and 27. And this is what I'm going to do. We're going to flow with our fellow and I pray God speak something for his people. And you know how we do here. We're going to let God have his way. Amen. But he says, and, who, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind and the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance. He said, in accordance, he says, with the will of God. So watch this. God already know what you're getting ready to go through. He, he knows the will for your life. So what people do is they say, well, what is the will of my life? I'm trying to decipher, you know, this, this stuff that I'm going through. Why, why is there no clarity? Why, why I don't seem like I'm coming or going? Like, what, what is the will for my life? If some of you just catch it on tonight, the perfect will is for you to be like Jesus. There's, there's no other will. The perfect will is for you to be a conform to the image of his son. So it's time for you to stop tossing and turning to say, what is the will for my life? You see what I mean? What, okay, what, what is God, what is it that you want me to do? That's what we Christians people do. God, what do you want me to do? You know, what, what, what is it that you want me? What, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know my calling. I don't know my purpose. Watch this. He says, and we know that in all, he said, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been a call according to his purpose. So he said, all things work together for the good, for them that love him, and those that are called according to his purpose. So we get into a place that we say, God, you know what? God, so despite of what I'm going through, you say this thing is working together for my good. So now I got my scripture. You know, see, this is the stuff that we read every Sunday. You know, we see this scripture, we just look at it like, you know what? It's just a regular scripture. Through the scripture, we may receive comfort, right? That's what the Bible says. So we, we see this scripture. But if, if we really believe that all things are working together for our good, why we buckle and, and we break in the struggle like we do? Why why do some of us, why do we why do we give up, you know, in the struggle? Why do we why do we throw in the towel if we truly believe? that all things are working together for our good. And these are people who do this. One thing about a trial, and let me build the foundation on this tonight because we're going to flow. One thing about a trial, trials come to let you know where you are in God. That's what trials are there, there for. So those who say they got so much faith, you, you claim you're in a realm with God. You know what I mean? You so deep, you so spiritual. But why, okay, if you so deep and you you so spiritual and you trust God and, and you hear God, why are you breaking over a telephone disconnect? Why are you still mean and nasty? Why you can't take nothing? Why are you always murmuring and complaining? Where your praise at? Why you can't give God glory? You understand? So I mean, if you if you believe that all things are working together for the good of them that love him, where's your praise at? Why are you buckling over little petty stuff, little small foxes? You understand? So I'm saying one thing about a trial, a trial comes to let you know where you are in God, to let you know where your faith is. So do you have enough faith to believe God what you're praying for? Do you have enough faith to believe God for the manifestation? So when the trials come, watch this now. So when the trials come, can you stand the test? So if you ain't going to the next level without passing this test first, God has to try you where you at. But some of us, we ready for our next level increase. We, we ready for our promotion. We ready for another dimension, another realm. You can't even get out of the realm you in now. You still stuck at the same level. As the word of God says, there are higher heights and deeper depths. 
So are you still on the same level, that same mediocre place in your faith? On the same level, still complacent, not moving. Because you still can't pass the test that God got you. So I'm saying if you if you truly believe that all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord. If you truly believe, believe that, where's the praise? Where's the hope? Do, where's your hope? Do you, or do you still have the hope? Do you know that God's going to uh, move or, or do you just believe? One thing about it, I passed that believe stage a long time ago. I don't believe. I know. So I know God's going to get the glory. I know God's going to deliver. I know God's going to heal. I came to a realm that I know God's going to move. Anybody can believe, but do you know God? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Do you know that he's going to make a way? So if the word of God say that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, all things work together for the good. He didn't say some. So if you believe that, you just give God praise and magnify God and, and magnify God and say, God, you know what? Despite the opposition, you told me in your word that all things are working together for the good. Do you love him? Are you called according to his purpose? That's what he said. He said, and we know this. Do we know? Do we know? He says, and we know that in all things, I'm talking about everything, in all things, he didn't say some, he didn't say half, he said in all things, so opposition, depression, suicide, no job, sickness, mind battles, he said in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and for those who are called according to his purpose. That's why I get rest because I know he, he told me in his word that in all things, listen, they're going to work together for my good. So somebody said, how is it good that, that I'm going through a trial? How is it good that I'm sick in my body? How is it good that I'm depressed. Because things like that, situations like that, the afflictions, David said it was good that I was afflicted. So I might do what? That I might learn his statutes. So you might know who he is. So in the midst of why you're going through a trial, God's going to reveal himself. That's if you're in God. So you may be to a place where God has to whoop you into a position. God may have to whoop you to your next level. And when I say whoop, I'm talking about he's chastening those who he loves. That's Bible. So what God is doing, God is taking us to another level through our trials and what we go through, through the opposition, through the cancer in the body, through the tumors and you know, through the mind battles and the, the uh, depression and the suicidal thoughts, he said, all things are wobo shatala baha. All things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are called according to the purpose. So we got that. So we know that when I'm going through a trial, when I end up, oh shatala baha, glory, I feel the anointing. When we go through a trial, God bless you, brother Michael. Good to see you. So when we go through a trial, we go through a trial in a mindset, God, you said all things work together for the good of them that love you. God, so I'm crying out, God, I'm seeking you. God, I'm magnifying you. God, I'm giving you praise. God, I'm fasting. But God, I'm not seeing a manifestation. What do I do? What do I do then? When you told me that all things are working together for good, you still believe. Even when you don't see results. Even when you're not seeing a manifestation. What does the word of God say? Contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. 
So are you going to contend for the faith of those? If you believe that all things are working together for your good, where's your praise? Why are you still murmuring and complaining through the process? You know, one way you can, uh, one, uh, there's a couple ways you can lose your anointing. It is by murmuring and complaining through a trial instead of giving God praise. That's how you can lose your blessings of God. By murmuring and complaining and not giving God praise. So if you robo shatala Baha'i, so if you knew that he said in this word, do not find it strange. Look, don't find this thing strange, right? When fiery trials come upon you. So don't find it strange when you're going through. When you was just receiving promotions on your job, you was just receiving blessings. You had pat on, pats on the back. You had visitations. You had such a glory. Do you, you know what I mean? No, don't, do not find it strange, right? When I was just moving for you in such a way that all of a sudden I turn around and hit you with a trial. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? It's strange. It's strange, God, how you got me going from one trial into another. So some of us, what we do is we come out of trials, then enter in trials. So we say, God, you just brought me out of this. So God, now you're telling me now I got to go back into something else. There's a blessing in your trial. There's a blessing in your bosha. There's a blessing in your mess. But if you stand the test, guess what God will do? God will give you a message out of your mess. Catch it on tonight. While there's some throwing in the towel, there's some people getting blessed for not giving up. There's some people being blessed for standing still, standing, uh, staying anchored in God, staying planted, not being easily moved, not always offended, not always breaking, throwing in the towel. There's a blessing for those kind of people, those who are consistent, those who seek God. Despite of them being tired and they body, despite of them being sick, they still waking up two or three in the morning, still seeking God. In the third watch, still trying to touch a place in God. Never complacent, still trying to touch another realm. To understand there's higher heights and deeper depths. So I got to come up a little higher. That's what these trials are coming to do. These trials are coming to take you to your next level. So we said in this word, listen, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are called according to the purpose, right? We got that, right? So listen, we understand that when the trials come, the trials come to take us to the next level. So now when we know that and we, we meditate on the scripture and you, we say, you, you know, we, we say we believe and we have so much faith, a trial is coming to try your faith. It's coming to try your faith. That's why I say God has to send you through trials you ain't never been through. There are trials. He's not going to hit you with the same trial. There's going to be trials that are custom made just for you to see if you're going to come out. To see if you're still going to magnify God and give him praise. You know, despite of your back bent up against the wall, despite of the pressure and the turbulence, God want to see if you're still going to give him praise. If you're still going to give under pressure, if you're still going to prophesy under pressure, God wants to see if he can trust you. Can I trust you with the anointing? Can I trust you with ministry? Can I trust you with the other uh, seeds that people sow into your life? Are you going to give it back to the kingdom? That's prophetic right there. Can I trust you with the covenant relationships that I send in your life? Can I trust you to stand still and not break in the struggle? Can I trust you? There's coming a time where every man's work is getting ready to be tried by the fire. Are you ready for your trial? Are you ready for your tribulation? If you're not ready for neither one of them, you're not going to go to the next level. I'm trying to help you. This is not that. This is not that. Uh, um, you're going to be blessed. You, you know what I mean? This is not that kind of message. Yeah, we know God can bless. We know that. But you also have to understand there are some teachers that are there to equip you, to get you ready for your next level, 
to help you right where you at, you know, because some of us, we're going in trials and we think we don't have to go through nothing. So we start cursing God and, and start complaining because we suffering, because we going through struggles, because we got opposition and we got perplexity and our backs up against the wall. One thing about it, trials are coming. Are you ready to face your mountain? If you can't run with the footsman, what you going to do when the horseman come? What you going to do when these big trials come? So I'm saying if we break in over little small stuff like telephone disconnections and little small stuff, if you break in over that, how can God trust you? How can God trust you in ministry? When you break in over little small foxes, little petty stuff, you know, stuff that's not even detrimental, stuff that's making you flip in and flip out. And now you're not consistent, you inconsistent because of little petty trials. Now everything is moving you because of opposition, because of the turbulence, because it's hard and it looks hard. And, you know, going by what your flesh and all of your emotions. One thing about it, this is the season that you come out of your flesh and you get in the spirit. Because your flesh going to make you feel like giving up. Your flesh going to make you feel like going and throwing a towel. Your flesh will make you feel like blowing your brains out. So in the midst of why you contemplating suicide, in the midst of why you feel like giving up on your marriage and giving up on ministry, think, think about if you're in the flesh or you're in the spirit. Because what's happening to some of us, we've been controlled by our flesh day in and day out. That's what the Holy Ghost gave me. Day in and day out, we've been controlled by our flesh. One thing about it, to get victory over your flesh, you have to starve it. You starve your flesh. And you give life to the Spirit. You understand. You seek the spiritual things. Increase your prayer life. Start fasting. Start consecrating yourself. Because this flesh, if you feed it, it eventually gets strong. You understand? And that's what's happening to many of us. We going through these trials and we double core by shape. We trying to fight, but guess what? We trying to do it on our flesh. You can't war in the blue shot You can't war in the flesh. You can only war in the spirit. You can only war in the blue shot You can only war in the spirit. So some of you trying to understand why don't I have the victory? Because you're in your flesh. You're not in the spirit. There's some things that's going on in the spirit. But there's some things that, that are just you. You have to get control of your emotions. You have to get control of your thoughts. The wicked imaginations. You understand? I'm talking about getting to bullshit. Getting to a place of full surrenderance in the spirit. To say God despite of what it looks like. I'm going to walk by bullshit. Despite of what it looks like, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Despite the opposition, God, I'm going to still magnify you. God, I'm going to still give you praise. I'm not about to break in the pressure. I'm not about to throw in the towel on ministry because it's hard and because people are talking about me. Because of lies and gossip and slander and they're trying to kill my influence. Yeah, it, it's all good that you're what you're going through. He said and all he said, and all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. So it's all good that you're going through it, even them trying to kill your influence. That's good. Even the depression, that's good. Even the sickness, that's good. Talk to me on tonight. So somebody say, I don't understand how you saying all that is good. You'd understand if you was in the spirit. You'd understand if you was in a spirit. Because how many times have you, if you, you, you spent your time contemplating on a situation and, and stressing and worrying about a thing, when God already told you, cast all your cares on me for I care for you, right? So we, we spend all our times worrying on situations and stressing about things. How are we going to pay this bill? You know, how, how am I going to get my car fixed? You know, how am I going to get to work? How am I going to get these hours on my job? I mean, we start, we start putting our mind on this, this carnality, stuff that God already told you. Take no thought of what you should eat or drink. 
God already told you that I'm going to supply the, every your needs, you know what I mean, according to his riches and glory, that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. God already told you that. So now we start putting our mind on everything. We start putting our mind on everything, but if you was in the spirit, you know that all things are getting ready to work together for the good and love of the Lord. You understand it's getting ready to work together for your good. But if you get in this flesh, the flesh ain't going to make you see nothing of the spirit. It's going to reject everything of the spirit. Flesh will try to drown out the voice of God. Flesh will try to make you doubt God. When you sing a bullshot, when you seen God do the miracles, you seen prophetic words come to pass. I'm talking about through you, through you prophesying, through you laying hands. So you've seen manifestations and you've seen breakthroughs. You've seen God move. So what the flesh will do is the flesh will try to make you doubt God. Your flesh will war. We're warring in our own members. Do you understand? That's Bible. We're what both shots are. We're warring through our own members. So this flesh is a battle too. You have to battle this flesh. You're going to have to go through in this flesh. That's why we got to starve it. That's why we got to get 100% in the spirit. So we won't fulfill the deeds of the flesh. You understand? So we're not feeding this thing. So somebody say, how is that good? <laughs> All things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord. Watch this. I'm coming in. I'm coming on in. Genesis 1 and 31. Genesis 1 and 31. He says, I give every plant for food. And he said, and it was so. And God saw that he had made and it was very good. And there was morning, right? So God saw everything that he made and that it was very good. Watch how I tie this in. We coming in. We're going to flow off this final scripture. So God saw all of this and he said it was very good. So God created the beasts of the field. He created Adam and Eve. We know that. He created the moon and the stars. He created it all. God bless you. He created your dog. He created your cat. He created the, the sea. He created the mountains. He created the wind. He created the moon. He created you. So you got it, right? And God saw. Watch this. He saw that I buy high shade. Glory. He saw that everything was good. Everything that he was made. And he saw it, everything that was made. The word of God said that he was like, and all things are created through him, visible, invisible. All things, that's Bible. He says all things are created for him, the principalities, dominions. Everything was created by him. So we're saying, God, even you created by trial, do what? Man of God, what? You created my trial. You created what I'm going through. You created sickness. You created evil. You created it all. So if, if some of your bullshit, if some of you can just understand, somebody going to catch it. It was very good what you going through. It was very good what you went through. Because God knew he was about to get the victory out of this thing. God knew you was going to be in that situation you in. God knew you was going to be rejected. God knew you was going to be persecuted. God knew there was going to be hell in your home, hell in your job. God knew it. But what this flesh does, this flesh will make you doubt everything of the spirit. Everything that God done for you. Everything uh, about the miracles and, and how God moved and how God blah blah shote, how God blessed you in such a way, how God brought you out of this situation and brought you out of that. Flesh will make you uh, forget everything that God's done. Good for testimony. Glory be to God. And see, this is what we do. <laughs> we we start we start getting in this flesh, we start getting emotional. We we start flipping out, we angry, we start murmuring and complaining. Because we don't have eyes to see. Somebody say, God, give me eyes to see it the way you see it. 
He says, God saw. He saw that all he made. And it was very good. Everything that he made was good. So how are you looking at your trial? How do you both shy? Glory. How do you see your trial that you're going through? How do you see it? Are you murmuring and complaining through your trial? Many of you are murmuring and complaining through your tests. That's what's going to bring your breakthrough. That's what's going to uh, send your next level increase. How do you see what you're going through? What are you speaking against because you don't understand? I understand the pain. I understand the afflictions. What you're going through. But God, give me eyes to see what you're both shy. Give me eyes to see what you're getting ready to do in my life. God, give me foresight so I can see down the line. God, I'm tired of seeing near. Let me see far. God bless you, brother, uh, brother Solomon. God, let me see far down the line. So God, let me see while I had to go through that horrible breakup. God will give you eyes to see. God will send you a dream of what they was doing or why he had to disconnect you from them. He'll let you show everything. But it's strange how God will show you everything after the fact to let you know why I did it the way I did it. What they were doing behind closed doors. Anybody thank God for foresight? Anybody thank God for warning before destruction? So God saw everything and said it was good. Not only good, that it was very good. So your trials, it was very good. The tribulations you're facing right now, it's very good. Because I know this thing is designed for God to get the glory. I know this thing is designed to take me to my next level. So some of you don't understand. I know they prophesy money is coming. I know they prophesy get your next level, a new dimension, a new realm. But how do you think you're going to get there? It's going to come through a test. You can't get nothing without passing the test first. First natural, then spiritual. You couldn't go to the, the uh, to be a senior in high school without getting through ninth through 11th grade. You couldn't get there. You had series of tests along the way. You understand. Everything happens by tests. God is going to try you. So this is an hour you say, God, give me eyes to see what you get ready to do. And God, give me eyes to see it the way you see it. Because I'm looking out of, looking out of my natural eye. I'm looking up, oh, cool, by shade. God, I'm looking at everything in the natural. I'm looking at the turbulence. God, I'm looking at the bills in the natural. I'm looking at how, how the wife is acting up in the natural. I'm looking at how the husband is acting up. How my kid is going in and out of jail. I'm looking at how my job is not consistent. My, my pay is up and down. Are you looking at it in the natural? Or are you looking at it in the spirit? To say, God, not only God, I see why you're doing it the way you're doing it. But it was all for my good. That's why he said all things are working together for your good. So this is why you don't murmur and complain through the process. You don't murmur and complain when God is taking you down an unfamiliar place and you don't understand it. Say, God, give me eyes to see what you're doing. Because God, I might be a little perplexed. I may not understand. But God, I'm going to trust you. So the trials, it was very good. The pain, it was very good. You mean to tell me the heartache broke in a thousand pieces. When I was going through depression for five or six years, the addiction, 12 years. You mean to tell me when I was going through all of this, 
you didn't say it was good, but it was very good. What I was going through. And that it was all working together for my good. Because God had said, you said it, those that, that love you and those that are called according to the purpose. Those who have a purpose in God will be tried. But it's to take you to your next level. It's to give you more of the anointing. Begin to magnify God under pressure and say, God, I trust you. God, I thank you for eyes to see. I thank you for ears to hear. But God, I want to make it in my prayer in this hour that God, you let me see it the way you see it. So God, I won't be murmuring and complaining through the process. So I won't be grieving your Holy Spirit. God, so I won't be having a bad attitude and, you know, wrong agendas and flipping in, flipping out. Only because I don't understand. So God, I can be consistent and not inconsistent. By seeking you and giving you glory. Not just a boko bashe, not just praising you when things are going well. But to praise you even when they're not so good. Because you told me that all things are working together for my good. So even God, when it don't look like it's good, when I'm in bad situations, God, give me strength to hold on. God, give me a spirit of praise and supplication to still magnify you. Not to just praise you, Lord, because you, you sent me a check in the mail. Not to just praise and magnify you because, God, you opened a door. God, help me to praise and magnify you because who you are. For being the, the deliverer that you are. For being the healer that you are. For being the savior that you are. Help me to magnify you in the struggle. Help me not to break under pressure and throw in the towel. God sent liberation. God sent Boshata. God set me free in his hour. God loose the chains, loose the shackles, and give me eyes to see. God, I understand it on tonight that what you're doing, it's all very good. And God, I thank you for it. But God, I bless you. I magnify you in Jesus' name. I just want to encourage you all on tonight on another midnight cry, flowing without fail or delay. Y'all share this message. I just want to encourage you. A really good teaching on tonight about it was very good. Get eyes to see in this season, to see how God see it. Say, God, give me foresight to see up ahead. God, I'm tired of being nearsighted. Let me be farsighted. Let me see way down the line. And you know, one thing about it, there are people who have near sight. They can see near. But there are other who see far. Say, God, give us binoculars so we can see way down the line. So we can see up ahead. So you can reveal what's getting ready to happen in my life. God, give me a glimpse. If some of you can just get a glimpse of what God's getting ready to do in your life, it's going to change you. You're going to begin to double shot out. You're going to be, begin to decree and declare until you see this stuff manifest. God, you've shown me dreams and visions of what you're getting ready to do in my ministry. You show me dreams and visions of what you're getting ready to do in my marriage. So God, I decree and declare a turnaround now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare my deliverance now in Jesus' name. Y'all just want to bless y'all on tonight another midnight cry. I love y'all so much. Stay connected to God and share this message. Love you.